pregnancy is usually a rewarding time in a woman's life. However, sometimes it can be complicated by unexpected illnesses or medical conditions. Dr. E. Peter Anzaldo of St. Joseph Hospital in Orange discusses the factors that contribute to a high-risk pregnancy. In today's age, I think the high-risk pregnancy patient it really has changed than it was maybe 10, 15 years ago. Uh, I think the, uh, the patient now, we used to thought a patient that was over 35 years of age was high risk. Well, really, realistically, with today's medicine, is one over 45 years of age. Um, mothers who have uh, cardiac disease, mothers who have chronic hypertension, mothers who have known diabetes, those are the kind of typical patients that I see. Three to four months before she considering having a child, she should come to see the high-risk specialist. We can counsel her regarding the risk of her having a, a fetal anomaly, the risk of her having some kind of chromosomal problem like a Down syndrome, and then what kind of diet, what kind of medicine, if she's a diabetic, what kind of control, if she's a hypertensive, what kind of medication she should be on that would be safe during the pregnancy. High risk not only means the mother, but sometimes it means the child. The child with these prenatal diagnoses uh, to our availability now, we're able to diagnose uh, genetic problems, syndromes, lethal anomalies, and then these pregnancies become high risk. In the first half of the pregnancy, our biggest toolkit is our ultrasound. I consider my ultrasound machine, machines in my office, as my third hand. Uh, they can diagnose pregnancy as early as 28 days from conception, okay? We can see a beating heart at about 42 days of age. Uh, and uh, as early as about 10 to 12 weeks, we can begin to now see uh, fetal anomalies that we haven't been able to see in the past because of the digital age that has come to the ultrasound machine. I think we measure our success not so much by the number of healthy babies because we know when we take care of these of these high-risk situations, we're talking about a higher proportions of our babies being ill, higher proportions of our mothers who are high risk give birth to critically ill and preterm babies. So our success is more in to maintain the health of the mother through the pregnancy, to reduce the maternal mortality uh, and, and morbidity, and also to bring out a, a baby that would be able to survive that transitional period from the birth to the NICU and possibly surgery if it need be uh, immediately. In the next 10 to 15 years at St. Joe's Hospital, we're going to be now setting up a unit called a high-risk perinatal unit where high-risk mother or high-risk pregnancy with an anomalous baby or a critically ill baby are going to be uh, coming to the hospital uh, for frequent antenatal visits and then finally for the ultimate, for the delivery, and then the transition team that will pick up the baby at the time of birth and be taken over to, to Children's Hospital for the NICU for possibly medical therapy, uh, cardiac surgery, uh, and then in the next probably five to seven years, realistically, which is probably looking at doing some in utero surgery. So you can have repair some of these birth defects in utero in this high risk unit. Uh, I recently come across a patient uh, just in the last year that received this high risk care uh, through St. Joe's chalk system. And basically it involved a triplet mom, a mom that was having three children. One of the three ch children was noticed on ultrasound to have two birth defects. So we had a very high risk situation that at the time of delivery, we needed to establish the airway of the baby. You saw the entire unit, uh, the operating room, the NICU, the neonatologists, the surgeons, the pediatric surgeons all come together for that special procedure called an exit procedure. So we actually, before we actually cut the umbilical cord uh, that the form baby, we had the baby intubated, established, and baby was breathing uh, before we even took a first breath. Before the umbilical cord was untied, we had the pediatric ENT doctor taking care of the established airway. And that's the future of the high-risk birth.